Did you know that in 2021 alone, Rolex produced over a million watches? Forged in secrecy, engineered for extremes, some of these marvels can even survive the crushing pressure of the ocean floor. This is exactly how Rolexes are made. Brace yourself. Sources say it takes nearly a year to create one, not because it's complicated, but because it has to be perfect, able to survive stress your car would implode under, and yet its heart ticks with microscopic precision. Just a luxury watch, this thing is forged like a weapon, then tested like a spacecraft, and assembled like absolute art, all by hands trained to catch flaws the human eye can't see. Because you've seen the surface, the gleam, the status, the myth, but beneath all that lies something more obsessive. Take a look. Before a single Rolex tick begins, the process starts deep inside their own foundry. That's right, Rolex makes its own gold. 18 karat yellow, white, and ever rose gold alloys are smelted and refined entirely in-house. This gives Rolex total control over the purity and color of its metals. Even the steel isn't ordinary. This is 904L Oyster Steel, tougher and more corrosion resistant than what's used in surgical tools. From there, ceramic bezels are baked at over 1,500 degrees Celsius, then laser engraved and filled with platinum dust. Movements are assembled under microscopes by expert technicians. No robots here, all balanced with synthetic rubies placed by hand. Every component is either crafted or tested under one roof. As you can guess now, Rolex doesn't chase perfection as a concept, it builds it, one part at a time. With secrets locked behind vault-like walls, this is more than just manufacturing, it's ritualized perfection. And we've only just started. But before anything ticks, Rolex takes things underground. It's not just about raw materials only. At Rolex, there's an obsession over where they come from. What does that mean? It means the journey begins at the geological level. We are talking raw ore, uncut gems, and powdered ceramics. Every supplier is vetted with scientific scrutiny. The gold? Rolex inspects purity at the molecular level before it even enters the foundry. Ceramics? Sourced in fine powder form with exact grain sizes for flawless compaction. But the real secret lies in consistency. Each batch of raw material is subjected to X-ray fluorescence, spectrometers, and microscopy to detect even atomic level imperfections. If there's any deviation, even a color shift under UV light, it's rejected. The tiniest parts, like sapphire crystal or silicon components, are chosen only if they meet absurdly strict tolerances. This isn't luxury for show, it's chemistry, metallurgy, and physics, all hunted down before a single cog is cut. And that's before the transformation even begins. But material means nothing without a perfect heartbeat. Inside every Rolex is a movement so precise, it's practically alive. These aren't mass-assembled mechanisms. They're individually crafted engines, built in climate-controlled labs by technicians who train for years to even be able to touch them. Each movement contains over 200 components. These are so small, they must be placed using tweezers under magnification like this. This balance spring is the part responsible for timekeeping accuracy. It is made of Parachrom, a Rolex-exclusive alloy resistant to magnetism, shocks, and temperature swings. It's thinner than a human hair, yet able to survive a fall that would wreck whole watches. But the most mind-bending part? Each movement is tested not just once, but twice. First, by the Swiss Official Chronometer Testing Institute, or COSC, and then again after casting using Rolex's own internal standards. And these are twice as strict. This is the mechanical equivalent of a beating heart. And it would be accurate to say it's built to outlive you. Here's the twist. At Rolex, this is how the line between man and machine disappears. Robots are used, but only where humans fall short. In logistics, for example, these robotic arms glide silently, delivering components with zero contamination and absolute efficiency. Microscopic cleaning, lubrication, and torque control? Done with machine precision no human can match. The final assembly, however, is entirely human. 
Every dial, every hand, every gear is placed by a trained technician, not a robot. And the attention to detail? Computer-like. The way a color catches light, the texture of a dial under magnification, the exact pressure needed to press a crown. It's this fusion that makes Rolex so rare. Machines ensure consistency. Humans ensure soul. One mistake, and a watch is torn down and rebuilt from scratch. This is a symphony of fingertips and algorithms. And together, they build something neither could do alone. But before it earns the crown, it must survive. A Rolex isn't considered finished until it's tortured. Each watch undergoes shock tests, thermal cycling, and pressure simulations that would obliterate lesser machines. Some are smashed with force equivalent to a car door slamming at full speed. Others are spun in centrifugal chambers or plunged into hundreds of meters of water pressure. A single failure, a hairline leak, or even a microscopic shift, and it's a total disassembly. Rolex isn't testing for normal wear. It designs for extremes. Deep sea diving, Arctic expeditions, space flight. That's why models like the Deep Sea can withstand 12,800 feet of pressure. That's more than a nuclear submarine. Even the winding crown, a fragile spot in most watches, is shielded by a triple lock system with three layers of waterproof protection. Every Rolex must not only keep perfect time, it must deserve it. And that means enduring conditions most humans wouldn't survive. But since Rolex is privately owned, what happens inside almost no one ever sees. They're protective of the brand. The processes are guarded like state secrets. Its main facility in plan les watt Geneva is a modern-day fortress. Bulletproof glass, biometric scanners, underground vaults, and an intricate system of security clearances keep the outside world locked out. Very few people, even inside the company, know how everything fits together. Components are built in four separate facilities, each specializing in different parts. Movements, cases, dials, and casting metals. No single location holds the full picture. This culture of secrecy is more than paranoia. It's control. It keeps counterfeiters guessing, competitors at bay, and the mystique alive. Employees rarely speak. Tours are non-existent. Cameras? Absolutely forbidden. The reason? Rolex doesn't sell transparency. It sells trust. And in a world obsessed with exposure, Rolex remains untouchable. Because if everyone knew the magic, it wouldn't be magic anymore now, would it? Talking about magic, even after millions being produced, you still can't buy one. But why? So here's the secret Rolex never admits. The scarcity is engineered. Rolex produces over a million watches a year. Yet good luck finding the one you want. Authorized dealers receive limited allocations, waiting lists stretch for years, and some models are virtually impossible to buy at retail. This isn't due to production issues. Oh no, it's strategy. Rolex controls supply on purpose, keeping demand sky high and resale values even higher. Each watch must meet obsessive internal standards before it ever sees a showcase, and only a select number pass that test. Rolex doesn't flood the market. It cultivates mystery. Every model feels rare, hunted, earned, and that perception, it's part of the brand's DNA. That makes each Rolex granted, not bought. So when a product is that tightly controlled, that's when it stops being just a watch. That's what really transforms it into a symbol. But now we reach the final secret. Once it's finished, it's only the beginning. A Rolex isn't made for fashion seasons. It's made for generations. Every component is designed for longevity, not trend. Movements are lubricated to last decades. Cases resist corrosion for a lifetime. Parts are built to be repaired, not replaced. That's why Rolex maintains records on every watch ever made. So even a 1960s Submariner can be fully restored today. That's engineering with eternity in mind. This is the major reason a Rolex doesn't retire. It's passed down, carrying stories, milestones, and memories. The true value of a Rolex is that it never truly stops ticking.